Hello friends, this is Satvinder Bhatia from Sukhmani Immigration Services, Brampton, Canada. I am a regulated and licensed Canadian immigration consultant. Today's video is very very special for all those who have visitor visa of Canada. What are the details? What are they going to get? What is the new changes? I'll share everything with you. Before that, I request if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. On this channel, we talk a lot about Canadian immigration news, update, tips and tricks. And if you like the video, share it with your family and friends so that they can also benefit. So without further delay, let's get started. So today's topic is convert your visitor visa to work permit. So how you can do it? Let us see. So you got a visitor visa of Canada. So you may have uh, got the visitor. Visitor visa is basically called TRV, which is the official language. We call this a temporary resident visa, right? So this is TRV, but commonly we call this as visitor visa. So you may have got visitor visa on the basis of visiting a family, maybe on the basis of visiting some friends, maybe on the basis of tourism or holiday sightseeing you may have because Canada is a very good destination for holidays and tourism. So you may have got on that basis or you may have got the visitor visa of Canada on business tour basis or you may have got the visitor visa of Canada on visiting international tours, international trades activities such as conferences etc. So by any means you have got the visitor visa of Canada. Now you can get this visitor visa converted to work permit and that too legally under Canadian law. Now you will ask why do I need to convert to uh, work permit? Valid question, right? So you will ask that why do I need to convert to work permit? So for that the answer lies in the benefits you will get by converting your visitor visa to work permit. And what are those benefits? Let us see. So the first benefit is that you can legally and legally is the most important word. Legally you can work 40 hours per week. You don't need to hide from someone. You don't need to work illegal. There are a lot of people who work illegally also. And if they get caught, so they will be deported. Yes, they will be deported. So be aware of that. If you have a work permit, you can legally work in Canada without any fear. Next thing, you can apply for PR. And when you get PR, you can of, of course you can go to the Canadian citizenship level, get a Canadian passport also. And then you can get the valuable Canadian work experience. And also, if you have a work permit, so your spouse can get SOWP, which is spousal open work permit. I have a complete video on that. You can check that. And based on your work permit, they, and that spousal open work permit is open permit. That means they can work with any employer, irrespective of which the, whichever the employer is. So. Uh, not just the spouse, if you have kids, so kids can get study permit based on your work permit. So they can start their pathway of Canadian education. And not just that, they can, you can also get uh, the benefits like CPP. CPP is Canada Pension Plan, EI, Employment Insurance. And of course, many places, many organizations which hire you have their own uh, workplace insurance so you can get an insurance a life insurance maybe health insurance whatever and not just that not just that you can also get uh, like provinces so health is provincially look, uh, look uh, you know taken care by provinces so province what they do is say some provinces also allow people on work permit to get health card so that is also additional benefit so your health coverage is also done so look at the amount of benefits which you get by converting your visitor visa to work permit. Now, 
Now let us look at how under Canadian law you can get this converted. So there is a public policy which came in and this policy is right here. I have taken this entire thing from the Canadian uh, government website. I will post the link in the description. So this policy is up till February 28, 2023. Almost one year still left, right? So all these details I have captured here in the highlights. So easy to understand. So public policy related to work permit, why it came? It came because of COVID, first of all. And COVID is not going to last forever. So already the restrictions are taken care of. The restrictions are going away. So many places are opening. So this will soon go away. So this is because of COVID, first of all. This came in August 24th, 2020. And this policy was actually till February 28th, 2022. But it recently, just few days back, it got extended for one more year. So policy was there in August 24th and visitors can apply for work permit. So you are legally applying for a proper work permit. So work permit will be employer specific. When it is employer specific, that this means that it will be supported by LMIA. Now, what is LMIA? I'll come to that. But for now, yes, it will be supported by LMIA and you can apply from within Canada. So you do not need to do any kind of flag polling. Now, what is flag polling? I'll let you know. This public policy is extended till, as I already told you, extended till February 28, 2023. It was originally till February 28, 2022. But just few days back, this got extended extended till February 28, 2023. So now, as I said, LMIA. Now, there is lot of information and lot of misinformation available on internet about LMIA. I will try to bring a complete video on LMIA, but for now, I'm trying to explain to you in short, in a very easy to understand language, LMIA. Now, LMIA, first of all, is a acronym. What is the meaning of acronym? Acronym is just like as soon as possible. So you take the first letter of each word ASAP, then it becomes ASAP. So LMIA is an acronym of what? LMIA is an acronym of Labor Market Impact Assessment. So LMIA, those letters are the first letters are taken and it becomes LMIA, Labor Market Impact Assessment. Now, Labor Market Impact Assessment, LIMIA, LMIA is applied by who? You don't apply for it. It is Canadian employer who applies for LMIA. Now, what does actually it means? It means he has a job and he's trying to fill that job. And he tried, tried, but he could not. He tried to reach out to people who are Canadian citizens, who are PR card holders, come do this job, but he was not able to fill that job. So when he was not able to fill the job, what will he do? He will say, okay, I need somebody to do this job. Otherwise my business will suffer. So what he will do? He will say, okay, if no Canadian citizen is available, no PR card person is available, I will request foreign national to do this job for that what he will do is he will reach out to ESDC ESDC is another acronym it is a government agency it means employment and social development Canada this is the organization which basically ESDC does impact assessment of hiring a foreign national so this is the meaning right impact leap labor market impact assessment. So labor market, what is the impact? What is the impact it is going to happen on the hiring of foreign national? What is the impact it is going to happen? Is it that somebody got a snatch the job from Canadian citizen or a PR card holder? So that impact is assessed by this organization called ESTC. So if 
ESDC assesses the impact and it finds that the, it is a positive one. So then it says, okay, hiring will be okay. Then it says positive LMIA. Then what you can do is that employer provides that based on that LMIA, you know, you can get a work permit, positive LMIA, where you can get a work permit based on that. So this is kind of in short, not that simple, but I try to make it simple to you for our understanding purposes. But this is how we talk about LMIA and based on that LMIA work permit. Now you have seen that this thing, this was, this is not a new thing. This thing was practiced earlier also, but there was a difference at that time. What you need to do, you need to do flat polling. Now, what is flat polling? Again, the word itself tells the meaning flag polling. So what you do is that flag Canada's flag is there at its borders, which tells this is the border, right? So Canada's flag is there. So you go to the Canada border, how it is done. Let us see. So flag polling means basically foreign national who is already in Canada returns to Canada back to Canada by you know, crossing into the US. So actually he doesn't go to the US. He doesn't have the US visa. All he does is he crosses the border. When he reaches the uh, Canada border, he goes and tell the CBSA officer, Canada border security agency officer that I am here to do flag polling, right? So comes to that place and tells that I'm here to do the flag polling. Now, I just want to tell you from my personal experience, I have been driving many times across between Canada and US and sometimes it's okay, but sometimes the lines and the traffic is too much. So, you know, being a Canadian citizen also, I have to wait because my turn didn't came. So sometimes we just wait in like two hours, three hours on the border. So this much is the amount of rush between Canada and US borders. So the borders are already strained because a lot of traffic is there. A lot of traffic movement is there between Canada and US borders. A lot of people travel. They have some have relatives, some have friends, some go just across for sightseeing between US and Canada. So a lot of traffic is there. The, the border is already strained. So CBSA officers really don't appreciate too much and they get stressed because of this flag polling activity, but can't do much. Right. So, so they inform the officer that you are here to do the flag polling and officer will direct you to the CBSA uh, office, which is on the border and you submit the documentation and what the documentation gets reviewed. So once it is reviewed, everything finds okay. You will get a new status, which is called work permit. So this process was earlier also there, but there is a major risk which was involved. What is the risk? The risk is that you are leaving Canada. You are exiting Canada. You are not going to US, right? So you are leaving Canada. You are not going to US. If officer finds that things are not in order and there is something wrong in your file. So what he will do? He will say, pack your bags, go back, go back where, go back to your home country. So it's a lot of risk is involved and that risk, because what happens is that you are facing the officer face to face officer asks one simple question. And that question is you initially came on visitor visa, how your intention got changed, why you want to work in Canada. And most of the people don't have the answers. And so there is a lot of risk involved. Now, what has changed now? The because of the public policy, you do not have to go to the CBSA office at border. All you have to do is file this online. So because of this, what has changed in the by the public policy? So you do not, you are not required to do any kind of flag polling. And secondly, because you are not doing flag polling, so the risk becomes very, very low. You just submit the document and you will get the work permit. So, but this is not going to last forever. 
This is till February 28, 2023. So it is because of the COVID, they don't want to burden the office and call so many people over there. And that is why this thing is there. So low risk and now application process for work permit. So you need to apply for this. You need to apply online. As I already mentioned to you, no physically carrying the paperwork. Just apply online and if approved, you will get work permit at your registered address as simple, right? So that thing, this benefit is there for a short period of time. Again, the situation will revert back. Now, so what are the objectives of this policy? The objectives of this policy are threefold. First, the objective is to permit, to permit eligible foreign nationals with valid temporary status as visitors to apply for job supported by work permit from inside Canada, within Canada, right? So permit. Second, to exempt, exempt eligible foreign national for the requirement that is that a work permit not be issued if not complete compiled with certain temporary residence conditions. So uh, as one exemption which is there is that you don't have to do the flag pooling. That is one of the exemptions. So third, which is to allow former temporary foreign workers to work while a decision on their work permit is application is pending. So this is a threefold objective of this policy. Now, another important thing is that who can benefit from this public policy? Two types of people can benefit from this public policy. One who are already here in Canada on a visitor status. They can benefit, number one. Number two, those who have the visitor visa but, but are in home country and planning to come to Canada. So they can also benefit, right? So these two type of people can benefit from this public policy. So if you have any more questions, about visitor visa, about work permit, or for that matter, anything related to immigration. You can reach out to our office. Our office is located in Brampton. The so the email and phone numbers are also shared here. And once again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. We make videos with a lot of effort. So your support is essential for us. And once again, Thank you very much for watching the video.